As researchers, it's important that we talk to people about our work. We know that a lot of people have questions about the research being done at Baylor College of Medicine on COVID-19 or coronavirus. So we asked a few friends to send us their questions and I will do my best to answer them. My name is Charles Zamora and I am a sixth grade student at, at BCM Biotech Academy at Rusk. And I have some questions to ask you about the coronavirus. Why does the coronavirus show itself in so many different symptoms in different patients? How do you calculate a contagion factor and why is it that the contagion period is so long? What is the difference between transmission through water droplets in the air and, and airborne transmission? So we are still learning a lot about this virus. What we do know is that the virus itself likes to attach to a human receptor called an ACE2 receptor. And this receptor is on different parts of our body. And so that virus can be taken up in different areas and cause uh, different types of symptoms. The reason it's causing a variety of symptoms, a different severity of symptoms, these are areas that we're still learning a lot about. And we'll take some time to try and tease out what makes this virus uh, specifically act the way that it's acting. When we're talking about how contagious a virus is, we're looking at what's called a basic reproductive number. So that basic reproductive number, also known as r naught, tells us how contagious the virus is. And you can then compare this virus to other viruses. So for uh, SARS-CoV-2, the estimates of the r naught are somewhere between two and three. And this depends on where you are. Um, different areas of the country, different areas of the world have, are slightly different. But what this r naught of two to three means is that any individual who is infected with the virus can then transmit the virus to two to three people. So this allows for the exponential transmission of the virus and causes um, more and more people to become infected. And this is why those stay at home directives are so important because it takes people out of that infective pool so that you can no longer transmit to several people if you're out in a public space. The reason that the virus takes so long to demonstrate symptoms, somewhere between two to 14 days or an average of about 5.5 to six days before people start showing symptoms is currently unknown, but being studied by scientists around the world. Droplet transmission, which is the presumed to be the major mode of transmission for SARS-CoV-2 is through respiratory droplets. These are larger molecules that are released when you cough, when you sneeze, or even just when you're talking out into the air. The size of these molecules, which will contain the virus, are large, and so they're not carried far distances uh, during that uh, sneeze or cough or talking activity. They, they tend to fall relatively quickly to the ground. So they won't be suspended in air for a long period of time. This is in contrast to airborne transmission, which are smaller molecules. And with these smaller molecules that are containing the virus, something like uh, measles, for example, the, the virus can stay in the air for a longer period of time, can travel further distances within the air, and because of that, there's additional precautions that need to be taken with uh, viruses that are considered airborne transmission viruses. 